Hello friends, welcome to another vlog, which I am, once again, starting super late. It is 9.30 at least, it's not 11 o'clock this time, so that's good. I have spent many hours today doing COVID stuff, and I made a big announcement on my feed, so that gives people a little bit of Q&A, so... That's exciting. If you don't know what COVID is, you can check out my Instagram or the last video, which is part one of this, so you probably want to watch that anyway, because that'll tell you exactly what is going on. But basically, the CosTubers are having a little convention, which should be pretty fun. I'm having stress dreams about it, so <laughs> that of course means it's a real convention and that's fun. Okay, corded stays. So I'm going to finish these up hopefully this week. I do need to read the instructions again because I did these sort of out of order and also I did a bunch of stuff back like I, these are front closing, not back closing. So now who knows what's going to happen. So fun times. So I need to figure out what I still need to do and I'm going to like <laughs> mark off on on this instructions like what I've done so that I know where I am in that order because I for the sake of getting them all corded, I just sort of like went ahead with it and did the thing. So I also need to clip these down, so I'll do that first thing. Um, I did get mail. I ordered these forever ago when I was on my what chalk is the best chalk tangent. I think I know what the winner of my preference is, but I need to try these and see how they are. So this is like powdered chalk, and I have something very similar to that, this, but in a pen format, they look like this. And I use these sometimes. They're okay. So I'm, I'm pretty sure these are going to end up being almost exactly the same, but I don't know. We shall see. I also, a while ago, was talking about needles and how they're given away by different weird places. So I ordered this a lot, because it wasn't very expensive, of these books. And aren't these so cool? And these were given away by the Bass Mark for Motors in Lorraine, Ohio, by Tom Wetzel. <laughs> So yeah, Tom Wetzel wants you to come to this motor company and do business with him. So he's going to give your wife some needles in order to make that happen. My husband had his mind blown by this. This is what the inside looks like. So they have a little pack of three to nine size needles in there. So that's what you get. Anyway, I got these because I thought they would be fun to send in like cards to people and whatever. It was like little you sew and I sew gifts, so I thought that would be cool. Yeah, anyway, so I, I explained this to my husband as he's like, what are those? And I was trying to tell him about it, and he's like, wait, that's original packaging? And I'm like, yeah, and he's like, what are those from? I'm like, I don't know, probably like the 50s or maybe the 60s, I don't know. Um, and he's like, whoa, they used to give people needles at places like that. I'm like, oil companies, insurance companies, like all kinds of places where you might show up with your wife and although you're the man and you're making the decisions your might your wife may have a little bit of sway and so they'll give her a pack of needles because that's a kind thing to do this and he's like oh like how people give away match matches now and I'm like yeah he's like oh and I'm like I wish people still give away needles he's like yeah but probably people more people smoke than so and I thought about that and I was like maybe not anymore which is good actually Lots of people are starting to sew, and most people are stopping smoking, which I find very exciting. <laughs> anyway, I had a great time in the comments from the last video. You guys all seem to be nocturnal, from what I can tell, <laughs> so that's awesome. Or, there's a few of you that get up, like, crazy early, so my schedule and your schedule still probably overlap by quite a bit, which is funny. But yeah, the comment section was pretty fun last time, so if you're new here and this is your first time viewing, please go down in the comments this time and leave a message for me and let me know who you are and what you're into and like what you sew and all that kind of stuff and how you got here. And yeah, if you are not new here, then you know what to do. Leave me a note about what it is you're working on and what you're reading and what you're listening to and all that kind of stuff. I am still on Death Masks of the Dresden Files, but I have like an hour left and then I will move on to the next one. I am not going to get done with the series by the time the next book comes out. And then I'm like, oh, do I wait until I'm done with the series and then read it? Or do I read it, like stop what I'm doing, read that, and then come back, finish the series, and then read it again? Which is sometimes what I do. So we shall see. Anyway, I'm going to go read these instructions and then start constructing these stays. So very excited about that. I hope to get these done during this video. I would like that very much. And then I can maybe start that captain, so we'll see. 
Okay, I made some sample lines with these, and I don't know. Um, they're very, they are very much like the pens in that they do stuff like this, where they just like gob on sometimes. But the red one was really the only one that did that, although the blue one is doing it kind of over here. And that's kind of why I don't like it, because sometimes they get like they release too much chalk and they get a little bit messy because the chalk is like powdery, and it, they're pretty easy to smudge. Although this one's doing all right. It is on wool though, but I don't hate this, so I'll give it a try on some things. There, there are some times when I use those pens, so I think these are just going to be basically the same thing though. Okay, so the first thing I think I should deal with is the boning situation because they're going to need to dry before I can put them in. So there's two bones that go back here. There is bones that go in a boning channel right here and bones that go in a channel right here. And then there's another one that's created on the sides right here, and this one's done with spiral steel. I do have the length of spiral steel that I need for this, so that's fine. This guy is exactly twice as long, so what I'm going to do is cut it in half, and then I'm going to file the edge and then plasti dip the end, um, because the plasti dip simulates this, like, I think that is plasti dip, so... I don't actually have dip, I have spray paint, because I didn't have a white plasti dip when I went there last time, so I just hang them on a hanger and put newspaper behind it and then spray paint it um, on both sides and let it drip and it makes like a little bulgy end like this one has and I just do it a couple times until it's good. Um, so I'm going to do that to this and this and then the bones will dry for a day or two and be ready by the time I need them. I also have a boning inventory in my phone like all the time because that's the kind of nerd I am which lets me know how many of what size boning I have available to me. So I'm actually going to go through and subtract these from the bone inventory now so that I know that I don't have them anymore before I cut them down so I can also make sure I get the right measurement. Okay, and then these are the tools I use. These are like heavy gauge. They're not bolt cutters, but they're steel cutters. And they're, uh, I think they're wire nips maybe? I don't know. They're actually getting kind of dull. Like, I think I'll probably have to get new ones at some point soon. And then I just have these two like industrial files that I file down the ends and these are very effective actually. So if you're looking to get files to do this sort of stuff you can get those cutters and these files both at the hardware store like almost all hardware stores have them. They're at Home Depot and Osh and Lowe's and all that in the tool corral. If you're gonna go get these though make sure to pick yourself up some safety goggles because the last thing you want to do is like have one of these snap and fly off in your eyeball and then also when you're doing this the shavings I mean, they're still, it's steel boning, so it's steel shaving. So be really careful when you do it. You're going to get steel shavings, like, around. Like, there's steel shavings now, like, around. So wash your hands before you touch your eyes and stuff, too. Okay, so I have gotten these trimmed up. I've gotten the other bonings plasti dipped. I have tried this on, pinned, and it fits, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I measured these straps. I think they're a bit long, so I will probably want to try this on again. I'm going to go ahead and sew this together and get some of the boning in and the grommets in before I do another try on with the straps to figure out what the size of those should be. So I might have to wait until the Plasti Dip is fully set, which will be tomorrow, to do that. So I'm going to sew these channels or these side seams up and then you also have to put in a boning channel in here and also like hand stitch over the lining so that'll eat up a bunch of time so it'll be fine so that's what's happening okay so I have them sewn together and pressed and I have folded over the lining and now I'm just going to sort of slip stitch this down little fells on both of these and then I'm going to sew a 3 8 inch boning channel here for some spiral steel. Okie dokie, so that's all done. I have the boning channels in the edge here, which I'm pretty happy with, although this boning channel is a little weird, so I might pull this one out real quick and just fix it. And then everything else is done and ready to put the boning in, but I want to spray this guy down because it has more, like some of the ink stuff is coming back. You can kind of see it, it's blue. And there's some on the front too, so I want to spray it down one more time just so like I can get as much of that off as possible. 
before I put metal inside of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then leave it for the night to dry. And then I realized I want to go ahead and put in the grommets so I can try it on before I figure out the straps. And I have to figure out the straps before I can bind the corset. So it effectively means I will be stopped until the grommets get here. And I did order those and they are on the way, but the mail might take a couple days. I can bind the bottom, so I might do that. Okay, so normally if you have a front that looks like this with a busk in the middle, you have a tape that runs through the very top and it allows you to tighten it so that it pulls these cups up over your breast a little bit to make it more like cup it and keep it there. I don't really know how to deal with that if they are, these two are not connected <laughs> together. So I guess that's something I'm going to have to think about also. Hello! I came in here like ready to go and do stuff. I was supposed to talk to my bestie today so I usually sew while I do that and I have two hours in which to do any kind of handwork or whatever and then I remembered like oh I have to wait for those comments to come. Like literally I said this to you guys like last clip and I forgot already. So I'm like, crap, I can't really do anything until the grommets get here. And then I'm like, uh, I can bind the bottom, I think. So I started putting the binding on while I was talking to them. And it looks as such. I got to about here. This is how slow I am. Although to be fair, I was like talking to them and looking at them and stuff. So I think I'm just gonna carry on binding this for now. And then if I'm still motivated to do something, I might switch to a different project or do a small thing or whatever. I have a bunch of little stuff that I would like to do like hussifs and whatever. Cue everyone in the comment section asking me what a hussif is. It's a uh, it's a, the German word for housewife. It's that like sewing kit holder thing that I keep buying kits for and I bought another one. I gotta stop buying these kits. <laughs> I just actually sew some of them. Also, I think if I look at the dimensions of the fabric that I get in the kit and just write that down, then I will stop having to buy kits because I'll just be able to use my own fabric scraps. Like that is a really good use of cabbage. And they're great Christmas presents, either the kit or a finished one, depending on how much work you want to do on it. So I think I'm going to do that for some people for Christmas time slash birthdays and whatever. So yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to sit here and hand sew this thing. So yeah. Shall we have chats while I sew? I'm gonna look down, so if I'm not looking at you guys, that's what's going on. I assume, I just kind of assume you're all sewing while you watch me. It's probably a weird assumption, but given the pictures that I get online from people while they're watching my videos, I just sort of think everybody is doing something else while they're watching my videos. So I figure it's okay if you guys aren't paying attention. I can also not pay attention. <laughs> anyway, wondering how you guys are doing. Please leave me notes below letting me know if you guys are all healthy and safe and well and maybe what what's happening where you are with the COVID, the Rona as they put it. California is spiking so I think they're rolling back some of the openings or some of the things about openings like they opened bars and then we're like wait a minute let's not do that <laughs> so they're all closing them again and that seems Fairly smart to me. Poor Christine. So, for those of you who know Sostine um, on YouTube or Instagram or whatever, Christine, she's um, an anesthesiologist who got just tapped to be a COVID doctor in her hospital. Um, and she works like crazy shifts. Like, there are days where she works 24 hours at a time. There are days when she's like expected to work 12 to 14 hours like regularly. It's just nuts like how much she has to work. And she's working in an ICU doing stuff. Like she does I think do some anesthesiology where she has to but like most of the time she's doing work on COVID patients now. And like people are sending her messages while her hospital's packed with COVID patients, telling her that COVID isn't a thing, it's not real. <laughs> and she's like, but, but I spend all my time dealing with people who are literally dying like one day, she had a whole bunch of people die. So, <sighs> sigh. <laughs> I just feel really bad for her. Like, you know, when you're sitting there dealing with someone and something and people are telling you that that thing isn't even real, that really has to suck. Anyway. Uh, what else is going on? I'm spending a lot of time doing COVID work, obviously. Um, I, at this point, have seven lives planned. 
which is kind of crazy. I have one on Thursday, two on Friday, two on Saturday, and two on Sunday. So hopefully those will be attended well so that the people who I'm hosting can feel love because that's what, what would make me happy. I know two of them at least are on other channels, which is good. I'm gonna go over to Bernadette's channel and we're gonna do that tech talk I talked about. It's gonna talk about the tech that we use to film our videos slash probably what we use to shoot Instagram photos and stuff like that. And I'm doing one with Marika where we're gonna do, I think we're calling it like in the panic room with Noel and Marika. I think it should just be a fun, fun type video hopefully, but we are gonna talk about UFOs and like dealing with them and managing them and keeping them under control and all that kind of stuff since I, she's the queen of having UFOs cause she squirrels a lot and I'm the queen of knocking them off because I have the list. So we're gonna chat about those I think on Thursday while you know people are basically in the panic room sewing or would have been if we were at costume college. So yeah. Oh, um, I did want to talk about that. So people keep being like, woo, virtual co or virtual costume college. I'm like, yes, but we're not affiliated with costume college at all. Costume college is actually doing their own, I think. I just saw this yesterday. Yeah, so someone sent me the email yesterday telling me that costume college is doing their own thing, which is great. I actually, I'm happy about that. <laughs> like, I think more learning is good. They're doing it only CGW members, so their guild, and then their sister guilds members, so like my guild is a sister member of them. I think my guild might be the only sister member. There might be one more. So we're, I didn't even get the email though, and I'm in the sister guild, so who knows if we'll even get the offer. Anyway, they're doing it on Zoom though, which is definitely different than YouTube. The one good thing we have about YouTube is that, I mean, it, I guess it's less organized because everyone can kind of just do what they want on their own channel, which I actually think is great. But it also means that it's accessible to everyone, like everyone. It's, theirs is free, ours is free, um, but it is accessible to everybody who's not like in a guild or whatever. And then also they live like forever. So if you can't show up that weekend or whatever, it's not like a Zoom meeting where like if you miss it, you're screwed. Also, there's no limit on class size and, and they're gonna have a limit, so. I don't think it's com competitive at all because I feel like you could absolutely do both. I mean, I can't because I am gonna be so busy dealing with COVID that I won't have time to do theirs, but um, I definitely, like people are like, oh, they're doing it and I'm like, okay, cool, great. Like, this isn't a problem. I think, I think having more outlets and more resources for learning is just the best and we should embrace that. In fact, there's another one the weekend after I think I talked about it. I think it's called like FrockCon and it's by the people who do Frock Flicks. So they're having one as well and I think that one's on Facebook the weekend after. So if you guys want to do even more of this kind of stuff, um, those are options for you as well. I think if you're on Instagram you can look, or maybe Facebook, you can look up Frock Flicks. Frock Flicks, by the way, I think is a podcast only, but well, maybe it's a site too. Anyway, it's, they go through and watch um, historical dramas and movies and stuff and then, you know, tear apart the costuming basically or, or praise the costuming if it's really good. They are funny, funny people. So anyway, they're doing one also. So, you know, I'm here for more learning. I am all about, this is not competitive. Like, this is not pie, right? This is not, there's only a certain amount. Like, the more the better. The more the better, always. So that's how I feel about it. And I, I wish, you know, I don't really want to run COVID every year or anything like that because that would get tiring. But I mean, I wish there was more online learning constantly. And I mean, that's part of what YouTube is for, for me at least, is I learn how to do all kinds of things on YouTube. Anytime I don't know how to do something, I go to YouTube and look it up and somebody's made a video on how to, how to do blah, blah, blah. So I definitely use it for that. And I definitely like kind of want my channel to be helpful to people and to teach you things and you know. I learn stuff from you, so as because people go in the comments, they tell me all kinds of stuff I never knew. So you know, great. I am here for the learning. Thread in the needle. Gotta get that thread through. Oh my god, just go in the hole. Seriously. What else is going on? Oh, our podcast premieres on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. It's always Sunday. July 5th. Although many, many people have already found it. <laughs> so if you're one of those people, then good on ya. The reason that people are being able to find it is because if you want to 
have it listed anywhere you have to have one live in order to do that and that's why people have podcast trailers normally so that they have something for the, the RSS feeder to find but it's not their first podcast and I, I, we didn't do that we just didn't <laughs> so yeah I mean I'm I don't know that we knew that that's why they had trailers and so we didn't make one but also I, I always thought the trailers were dumb and annoying so <laughs> now I don't have to have one of those so but people are finding it early but we're cool with that like if you find it trust me you can find it anywhere just go look in podcast apps because they're li it's listed everywhere so but yeah I'm happy for people to have it whenever they have it it's nice that we get to do a, like a launch like a launch day but who cares you know <laughs> like if people find it I'm just like astonished by the people who are like oh my god I found it and I and then they post it like somewhere very public and they're like it's on blah 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 and I'm like dude you know if you find it cool but like don't ruin the launch over it and like I'm happy for you to listen to it if, if you find it but you don't need to tell everyone else where it is also but yeah I'm excited about that happening and then they will go to a routine of once a month it's bizarre though because like I actually fought pretty hard I mean, it wasn't like an actual argument or anything, but like I was like, oh, we should have the schedule be once a month because it gives people time to get the book and read the book. And, you know, if you have it, have them too often, like, you know, we were talking about doing it every two weeks, then people don't have time to read all the books and stuff. But now I'm like, yeah, but you only get 12 books a year then. <sighs> so that part sucks. So we might drop fun extra ones at in, at random times, you know, if we just have one or if it's a holiday and we have a holiday themed book or, you know, something like that. We might, we might drop, drop extra ones, but who knows? I have great ideas for the, the April Fool's ones, like choice, choice ones. My, uh, friends that are YouTube-y are having a discussion on our group chat about fur and there are varied opinions in there about it. Uh, so people are trying to figure out if, you know, vintage fur is okay to wear slash cut up and make other things out of, or is it bad all the time period because no matter what you're promoting the use of fur. And what about um, non-vintage fur that's raised for the fur of it and then the animal is fully used, like mink I think is raised for fur and then the meat is used for dog food and stuff. So they're having a big discussion about it and I find it absolutely fascinating to hear everyone's opinions and it does make me think a lot about my own opinions. And then there's the like, the leather question, right? Because not all cows that are raised for meat are also leather cows. Anyway, I am a person who thinks if you have a leather or a piece of fur, I think I've talked about this on this channel before, if you have a piece of fur that exists already and it's vintage or whatever and you obtain it then best use the fur right it's way better than just like trashing it or you know putting it in a landfill or whatever like that just seems like such a waste of I mean I eat meat so I can't I don't really have a leg to stand on it's such a waste of a, a life to like not just use the thing and it's already done basically so I am that person I am contemplating how I feel about new fur, obviously nothing endangered or weird or whatever, but like rabbit or mink or things that we consider vermin that are raised specifically for that. I don't agree with the way they are killed, 100%. Like that is not some ethical things. So I guess I have issue with that part of it. Um, and I don't know if there is an ethically um, destroyed version of fur that you could buy. So I'd have to research that. I don't buy new fur ever. So I just don't know how I feel about it in general. Like I haven't really, other than I don't like the way that they're killed, I do feel like I don't know how I feel about it, I guess. Does anyone out there have commentary? I'm sure you all have commentary on that. Does anybody want to share with the class about how they feel about that? <laughs> like, you know. As long as people are civil in the comment section, I am down for discussion. I think more things should get discussed, not less. <sighs> My husband and I had this very interesting discussion about privacy the other day because he's very protective of his privacy. So basically what happened was I belonged to 23andMe, I got my DNA results, blah 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 blah. 
and they send out these survey questionnaires because they also ask you if it's okay to use your DNA for research purposes and your name is not attached and they're obliged to abide by HIPAA and all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, okay. Also, because I think if we don't have like research, we can't make progress and like someone has to give it up in order to, to make the progress, right? Also, um, while I'm into like privacy for safety and for like, you know, obviously financial stuff. I'm like not a big person, obviously, because I sit here and spill my guts to you guys <laughs> on YouTube that is like out in the public forever and ever. I, it's not like I'm, I don't care about privacy. Obviously I do, but I'm less private as a person. I share stuff and I, I find it much easier to live my life as someone who shares things with others because then I don't have to worry about who I told what to and like what secrets. It's just so much easier for me because I can't remember any of that stuff anyway. I'm like not good at that. <laughs> and if you tell me a secret, I just put it in the vault and I don't tell anyone because you either tell everyone or you tell no one. <laughs> so that's what happens. So he is super privacy oriented and he's like, why are you filling that form out? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, because research needs to happen, right? And they have my DNA already and they have my profile stuff. So the more information I can give them about me helps them like establish things, right? Like they've found stuff out about COVID because 23andMe did, did research. Like they found DNA links and stuff to things. So I was having this discussion with him and I was like, also, I don't kind of believe in privacy a lot of the time because I think we're trained to be so like private, private, private. But I think that's actually like, some of that, not all of that, obviously, like my financial records or my financial records and you don't get to know that, but like there are things that we're told not to talk about and it's partly that it's the man keeping you down, basically. And that's like a, a crappy way to put that, but you know, like we're taught not to talk about our salaries with our coworkers because that's considered rude. The only reason they tell you not to talk about your salary is so you don't get pissed off when you find out that the same guy who's doing the same job as you is getting paid twice as much as you and you should be getting paid that much. They think, oh, well, you guys are going to get in a fight about it. No, you don't get in a fight with your coworker. You get in a fight with management and that's what they don't want. I don't want, I don't ever want to begrudge my coworker what they get paid. I want to get paid the same as them. <laughs> that's different. You know, it's like, it's like any other thing. I don't want to take away someone else's thing. I just want an equal thing, right? Especially as a woman, like, especially as a woman, I think we should talk about our salaries. Also, there's so many things that we keep private, like being gay or postpartum depression or miscarriages or anything else that like, the second people start talking about it, you feel so much less alone. You get so much more mental health out of it. Like mental health issues is also another thing people used to keep private and, and keep secret and not talk about. It's so much better to talk about things. Like it's so much better for your life. Obviously that's not everything. So like, don't, don't come at me in the comments, but like, I definitely think talking and not being like freaked out about your privacy all the time is better. Like it just is. It, I mean, it makes my life a lot easier that I'm, I'm not private about almost anything. I, I don't care. Like you guys want, do you guys want to talk about poops? Like, what do you want to talk about? Like, <laughs> I'll talk about it. I don't care. I don't, I don't really have too much of a line because I feel like the only way to make everybody feel good and to feel, oh, wow, I'm not alone and everybody else feels this way and, oh, you had this problem too? Oh my god, how did you solve it? Is if we talk about stuff, right? So, I mean, I think there's definitely things that people have an absolute reason to keep private, right? Like, there are things that I don't share on this channel with you guys because I need to keep them private just for my own safety. But pretty much everything that's just random, like I'm, I'm willing to share because I think that we should talk about these things together because I think that's the only way to a mentally healthy and good solution. Because once you start talking about things with people, you start getting more options and you start getting more ways to, to deal with things and stuff like that. So actually he was super privacy oriented until we had that discussion. And I was like, what about being gay? What about this? What about that? And he was like, oh yeah. I guess I kind of see your point. I'm like, it's fine for me to fill out the 23andMe survey, dude. He was like, why are you doing that? And the, by the end, he was like, yeah, okay. I'm like, I'm not, like, they ask you things like, you know, your dietary stuff, like how much milk are you drinking every week or how much whatever. And like, who cares if they know that? Like, I don't care. Like, yeah, I ate three apples that week, last week. Oh my God, I should keep that so secret and so safe. No, shut up. You know, like, do you feel like cilantro tastes like soap? 
who cares if I answer that question? You know, like it's good to have that genetic information so that they can do more research and find out more things about our DNA. So I know that there's going to be people here that totally don't agree with this standpoint, but that's my standpoint on it. And I think I just I think it's good to help researchers and I think it's good to make progress that way. And I think it's good to talk about things. And, you know, his concern is like, what if the what if the insurance companies find out that I don't think cilantro tastes like soap? I don't care. <laughs> don't really care. Also, they're obligated to HIPAA and all that stuff. But even if they're not like, I get it but also research and that's how I feel about it. <laughs> anyway, wow, I'm just like dishing the controversial topics today, aren't I? What else do you guys wanna talk about? Oh yeah, a controversial topic. Yeah, so there's this bill that apparently is gonna go through the California State Senate to eliminate buy piece payment for garment industry workers. So right now, garment industry workers on average make $6 an hour because they don't get paid an hourly wage. They get paid by the piece and that piece is like, you know, 10 cents. And they get treated like garbage and they get underpaid and that's why all of our clothes are so cheap. And so there's a bill in our state Senate to eliminate the ability for garment workers in California, and there's a lot of them in LA, to be paid in that fashion so that they have to make a minimum wage, which, I think in California is, for some reason I thought it was $9 or something like that, but now I think it's something I read was like it's $16 an hour now. I'm like, wow, when I was, when I first got my first job, my the minimum wage was $4.25. <laughs> I'm sure people on here are going to be like, when in my day, minimum wage was 95 cents or whatever. <laughs> I'm just like $16 an hour. Wow, that's actually... It's good, but it's probably actually not livable. I mean, it's livable in parts of California, but not anywhere near where I live. I think the last time I looked, poverty line in Silicon Valley was like $80,000. Like you could make $80,000 a year and not be able to afford your own apartment. You would have to share space and you would be considered living in poverty because you wouldn't make enough. I don't know how families do it here. I just like, if you don't have a tech worker in your household that earns like crazy money, I don't understand it. But I can understand like how that number gets derived because, you know, I know when I made $60,000 a year how much I got paid per paycheck and like it would take both paychecks to pay my rent for sure. I think it's you have to be able to pay your rent with 30% of your net income. That's really hard to do in Silicon Valley. So yeah. So there's another controversial topic, paying people by the piece. I don't think that should be controversial. I think we should like pretty much all agree that that's a good idea like I get it cheap clothing I get it but also we should be fair especially in California LA is is hard to live in you know at 16 bucks an hour too so I can't even imagine trying to do that also I had a friend who said she worked at a tailor shop and it's not just like oh you get paid by the piece but like also the quality gets held over your head like a weapon so if anything's off at all your piece doesn't count so yeah that's very stressful like i can't even imagine that i really i would just pay more for clothes like okay and i understand that i am privileged af to be able to do that so and i understand that there is another side to this conversation about people who can't afford to pay more for clothes but i also think we have started making too many disposable clothes that you know don't actually get worn for a long time or i mean that there was some survey and it said like on average people wear their piece of clothing three times before they think it's old and then they want to throw it away. I'm like, I personally have worn this t-shirt 80 times, <laughs> you know, and I will continue to wear it until it dies. And I mean, I buy new jeans like probably every three years and I have three pairs of jeans and that's it. So, and I buy American made jeans, like ones that are made in America. I try to buy my t-shirts that are all made in America also, but they're made by those garment workers in, in LA, I bet you. So that's why I'm, I'm on about this and like sending emails to senators and calling them and stuff because I feel like it's important. I, I don't shop for clothes very much. I buy clothes at events, typically. <laughs> Like this t-shirt right here is a Ryan Hood t-shirt and I bought this at a house concert. So I went to a house concert. Do you guys know what house concerts are? It's where a person hosts a band and they invite a certain number of people. Like, um, I think the one I go to usually is about 
30 or so people and everybody pays like whatever 20 bucks or whatever to get in the door and the band plays at the house and then they also sell their merch and cds and all that stuff like at halftime and after the show and there's usually a break where people all bring food and there's like a potluck snack thing so and it's at like a stranger's house i do them all the time actually well i do before covid i actually miss house concerts you can find them for every kind of music too the ones i go to are typically like kind of folky music because i don't get a lot of that in my life in general and i think it's fun and it's beautiful to hear people play like mandolins and random stuff like that it's not that's not like i mean honestly i'm a grunge kind of girl i peaked in the 90s and I stayed there so like Pearl Jam is my jam. I like all kinds of music so the folk, the folk ones are really fun but you can find like reggae ones, house concerts, you can find all kinds of things. I think like meetup.com is a good place to find those. Um, sometimes like Craigslist advertises them, stuff like that. So if you're interested in house concerts they are crazy fun and the people who invite you into their home are usually super welcoming and pretty awesome so I do recommend going to those. Anyway, like I said, <laughs> I buy t-shirts and stuff at events. Like I get almost everything at either a concert or, you know, whatever event I'm at. And my wardrobe is very limited to jeans and t-shirts. I do have some like dress clothes for if I have to dress like business casual or if I have to go to a wedding or something like that. But man, the clothes I have to go to weddings I've had for probably 12 years. I think I bought like three dresses and they're all very similar and they're all just different colors. And I wear those to every formal event I have to go to. And I, I mean, it's like a uniform but I find it much easier. I do not buy new clothes lightly. But it's not, honestly, it was never because of an ethical stance on the buying new clothes. I just, I mean, I guess it is. I just don't, I'm like, I don't need new clothes. I don't need more stuff. I don't, I, uh, I don't know if I've told you guys this, probably not because I don't talk about it very often, but I, it's like 13 years ago, I had a fire in my house when I went on vacation. Like my house burned down and it didn't burn down it my house caught fire and it was like completely destroyed um but it was an apartment and that did not burn down but i always say my house burned down <laughs> i did not care about any of the things in my house at all afterwards like everything was destroyed pretty much everything i have a couple of pieces of furniture that survived and i have some clothes that survived and like i have other things that i kept that are smoke damaged but i kept them for memory's sake but almost everything was just destroyed. Basically, I left my vacuum cleaner plugged in and I think my cat stepped on it, that's what they think, and it ran for 12 hours and like all my neighbors heard it running and they smelled the smoke and they didn't do anything. Awesome. And then it ran so long that it caught fire, basically, and burned itself out. But then the air conditioning detected the heat and started running and what that did was push the heat through the whole house because the air conditioner couldn't keep up with the amount of like heat that was there so it was pushing the heat through so it, it ended up melting everything so everything got melted and so smoke damaged that it was like basically destroyed and everything just smelled like smoke afterwards and stuff anyway the only thing i cared about <laughs> a lot of diatribes today the only thing i cared about at all was my cats and they did all pass away and that was absolutely de devastating and i literally cried for probably a year like I I almost I mean I stopped crying intermittently and stuff but like I could never talk about it so at some point I started talking about it like I said got to talk about things because that helped me to be able to talk about it right it helped me get not better with stuff like this I think I describe it as it never gets better it just gets farther away if that makes sense like you can it's like a wound you can like the first time you poke it it stings and then after that it gets easier to touch it so I can touch this thing now so that's why I can tell you about it. Anyway, what I learned, God, I'm so chatty. What I learned from this experience was that I don't care about my stuff at all because I didn't care. All of the stuff's gone. I had collections of things. I had a full house full of furniture. I had giant wardrobes. I had huge televisions. It's all gone because it all melted. Like if you've ever seen a blob of television, it's weird. So what I discovered was that I don't care about stuff at all and all those shoes I had and clothes I had didn't mean anything. So it was a horrible event that led me to knowledge about myself that is actually very valuable. So anyway, that leads into the whole discussion about buying clothes. I don't do it very often because I'm like, eh, I don't really need that. I don't, um, obviously I'm not a hyper fashionable person. I'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl. I would always rather be comfortable. If you meet me anywhere, I will likely be wearing jeans and t-shirt. And if I'm not, it's because someone's getting married or someone died. Like, <laughs> those are the reasons I dress up. 
I, I dress up for like my anniversary or something like that, but it's very rare. Fortunately, I live in Silicon Valley where that dressing style is perfectly acceptable and in fact, sometimes I'm considered dressy. <laughs> if I wear like a nicer top, a t-shirt without a graphic on it, then I'm considered dressed up. <laughs> because other people are at the events I'm at in shorts and flip-flops because it's Silicon Valley. Anyway, back to the original topic. I do feel strongly for these people that we need to treat them kindly and with the same rules as everyone else that does a job. And they're doing a very difficult job that provides us clothes. So I would rather have less garments that are better made and are more expensive and have everyone get, you know, a decent living wage and healthcare. But um, I'm a dirty socialist, so <laughs> you may not agree with that. I think if you're here, you probably agree with that. I am very impressed, I would say is the best word to use here, with the comment section on my videos. I know I talk about it all the time, like how much I love the comment section here, but like one of the reasons I love it is because everyone's very civil. And everyone, people do have different opinions. It's not like there's only dirty socialists here. <laughs> um, uh, there are a lot though. Like a lot of people have the same viewpoint I do, which is like, cool. I, I love that. <laughs> but there are people who, who have different opinions, but everyone has been really civil about things and not a giant jerk. And I am very impressed with that and I hear horror stories from my friends about their comment sections and what people say to them and how horrible they are to them and just they're <laughs> irrational and mean and just like I would be like oh look the block button you know <laughs> that's how I am like I am happy for you to have a very different opinion than me but the second you're a jerk or insensitive to someone who else in the comment section or being rude to me or whatever, I'm like, no, see you later, click. And you know, I haven't had to use that very often. I think I've used it twice since this channel was incepted and that was, that's been a year and a half. So that's a really high rate and it speaks very highly to you guys who watch these videos. Like, that's actually amazing. Uh, I'm one of the very few people and like all of my friends who are also youtubers are supremely jealous of how awesome you guys are like they're like oh man you have the best viewers like they are just the best and i'm like i know right so i am i am very pleased and so now that i said that please don't be a jerk in the comment section because i'll block you but i am happy to hear a different opinion than i have like for sure especially if you have like a really good argument for your opinion like then I'm especially happy to hear about it because then I'm like, hmm, that will make me think about my stance on whatever it is and possibly change that. All right, what else is going on? I continue to lose weight during COVID. I think it's just because I accidentally eat vegetarian a lot, which I mean, I ate one meal a day. So I only eat two meals a day just in general. And, and one meal a day always has been for the last like maybe three years. I eat vegetarian anyway, but there are a whole bunch of days where I go completely vegetarian and I'll do it sequentially. So yeah, I think I'm down 24 pounds since last year, last year at this time. And since COVID started 12 pounds. You know, it's weird though. My corset doesn't fit that differently. Like <laughs> I haven't lost size at all. I think my stomach is like flatter, but I still have the same waist measurement, which is very strange. I think I'm just losing it all over, although people tell me I'm losing it in my face. So that's good. I mean, I am not a person who really cares about my weight a lot. I do weigh myself every day. I think it's good to keep track of, and the, the reason you weigh yourself every day is so you become desensitized to seeing that number. <laughs> it is the best tactic if you want to not worry about how much you weigh anymore, is just weigh yourself every day, because at some point you will stop caring what that number is. <laughs> So also it's good to know if you like increase or decrease rapidly, it means something's wrong. So it's, I, I do it, but I don't really care about the number very much. Like I need to be happy as a person and feel well fed and nourished and stuff like that. But I, I'm sure that my doctor will be very <laughs> pleased that I have lost weight. I am hearing that people are either going one way strongly or the other, that they either are losing weight or they're gaining weight and they're bummed about it. So if you are a person who's gaining weight and bummed about it, I'm sorry you're bummed about it, but also you are still awesome and beautiful and 
this is just fluff that gets added because we're all under stress. So I would, I would not add to your stress by being stressed out about the weight you're gaining because of stress. <laughs> Whew, that was long chats. I think I'm gonna put a note that if you wanna skip that, you can. Um, anyway, I have done one side. So that took me a couple hours. So I'm gonna flip this guy over and sew down the other side and the bottom will be bound and I will have one more thing done and another one bites the dust. Woo. Okay, the binding is done, front and back on the bottom there. So that took me quite a while. I've been in here since three and it is now 9.30. So um, to be fair, I've also been like having chats with people and doing other stuff. So that's, it's not consistently six and a half hours of me binding, but it probably did take about five. And that is just because I'm damn slow. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna wait for these grommets to get here. Hopefully they get here tomorrow so I can grommet this thing and give it a dry on and adjust the straps and then bind the top and then we're done. Woo woo. Hello, it's Thursday. Uh, yesterday was a complete wash because my grommets did not come, but I just got mail and here they are. And so I'm very excited. I just did other things. I started on the program for COVID. I cleaned a bunch of stuff in my house. I put stuff in our like loft area that needed to go up for a long time. I did change all the sheets, you know, that kind of stuff. So the day was very productive actually. <laughs> like. That's way more productive than what I normally do. Normally, I spend a lot of time playing Zelda, so. <laughs> but I did get a couple other things in the mail that are cool. So. All right, well, I have two of these packs somewhere. There's another one, and I don't know what, what happened to it. It's already gone, so. But I opened these in my bed, so hopefully there's not like a pack of needles floating around in my bed. Uh, several packs. <laughs> so these are size three to nine, and they're antique. So not, I mean, vintage or whatever, so. These are also just fun. They have a little bit, some of them I opened up a little bit, and some of them have a little bit of rust on the end, but I think you can just um, strawberry that off, and as long as they come out clean, you're all good to go. So these are cute, and I will mail them off to people if they're still good. Also, I got a fab deal on a set of two parasols, which I'm super pumped on, because uh, the person wanted to get rid of them, so I think these were like maybe 70 or 75 dollars for two and i was like yeah they're both good condition they're of course shattered like you can see the shattering of that right there but whatever and they're both tilters and in a perfect condition to be covered so now i just need to get my ass on covering them um but yeah so more stuff to add to my collection but most importantly the grommets so i only have a couple hours right now because i'm gonna go over the hill to my favorite greek restaurant which is called the sillies in santa cruz and get some takeout and sit in the car and eat with my husband because he's off work this week so he's just chilling so i'm gonna mark the grommets and then go ahead and grommet it so that i can do a try on and get the rest of this done and then we will be complete woo -woo. a little pro tip from me to you if you are working just like with a corset in general or anything you're gonna stuff steel bones into that means that you can't just toss this in the wash wash your hands a lot especially if it's white because man I can't even tell you how many corsets I've gotten like severely grubby because I was at some class doing it and I didn't wash my hands constantly so yeah like wash your hands like you feel like you might have just been exposed to covid <laughs> like wash them a lot i wash my hands like every like half hour to hour when i'm doing this because especially as you're like working with fabric and like pushing cording through and you know there's a lot of like hand heavy manipulation when it comes to corsets uh, especially corded ones especially white corded ones then you start to like you know your hands get sweaty and stuff and like it just picks up dirt from the table and it, 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 just wash your hands wash your hands i mean do that anyway because you know we're in a pandemic okay this thing is possibly really hard to see here that's better my friend sarai 
made this for us. We went to her birthday party and she made party favors and she laser cut this lacing hole guide and it has different centers. So this bottom one is a half an inch, this one is three quarters and this one's one inch. So if you need like an inch and a half, like this thing calls for inch and a half, so you could just skip one, you know, and get an inch and a half. Uh, sorry, I skipped two because <laughs> I can do math. <laughs> anyway, this thing is so awesome. I'm trying to figure out if I actually want to do an inch and a half or I want to do inch ones. I think because these are short, I might do inch, but this is the most useful thing. I left this tag on, but I really should just take it off because <laughs> like it doesn't say anything other than my name. But yeah, this thing is awesome and I use it all the time. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever gotten at a birthday party. <laughs> Here's another pro tip. I got these tiny ends that were making me crazy with a pair of fingernail clippers. These ones came in this crazy kit that I got on, I don't know, probably Amazon a long time ago. Um, and they have this like angled and very like short thing. But honestly, I didn't need to use these. I could have used any one of these clippers to do this. These are just like, this, these ones I think are straight. Is that the thing? Yeah, they're straight. Whereas these ones are kind of curved in. So it's easier to get a straight cut with these ones. So anyway, I did manage to get all the ends in. And that is making me ponder if I should put the linen side out. I put the linen on here because I thought it would help keep me cooler. But I also like the way it looks more. <laughs> uh, I guess I think keeping cool is more important so I'll put the linen to the inside but maybe next time I'll just make all linen stays I don't know that seems like a bad idea <laughs> it's too squiggly alrighty this is the reality of things I have placed a towel on the ground because my floor is manky AF this is what happens like I think I vacuumed four days ago gross huh cats sigh anyway um so I put a towel down so that, again, this would not get super dirty. And then um, I just put a board down to do this on. So I use a rubber mallet um, because it gives you a, a bigger possible surface strike than a hammer. Also, it's like less loud, but it's just as heavy. But it gets kind of like a softer, more even push down to it. So I don't know if this is right, but it is what I do. And then, of course, I use an awl instead of like a hole punch um, and all moves the fibers out of the way rather than a hole punch which breaks the fibers and you want the strength of a continuous fiber and it just to go around the hole rather than breaking fibers i mean occasionally fibers do break like it's you know delusional to think that they wouldn't but m most of them get moved basically and i did decide to go with one inch because it allowed me to have ones close to the bottom and top. If I did an inch and a half, I could have one on either end be close, but the other end would be pretty far away, like a whole inch. So I just erred on the side of my fluff needs containment and more lacing is better. Okay, these are all done, so that's exciting, and I'm going to go downstairs and get my shift and put that on so I can try these on. I did measure the waist there and that these, these should fit me theoretically so and the last pair fit me so I didn't do a mock-up this time but anyway um, I kind of like these white ones a lot I think they look great on white cotille and I really like that they're silver on the back because it's sort of easier to make sure that you have the right thing on the right side which believe me does happen when you're doing silver on silver you accidentally make it so that the grommet part sometimes is on the outside like you would think that you're smart enough to not do that but I am not that smart <laughs> so it does happen from time and then you have to rip one out and it's a pain in the butt and you lose a grommet and blah 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 alrighty it's time for embarrassing mirror try-ons try with Noel. okay so this does fit I actually have plenty of room in here I gave it a little extra space in the side seam like I sewed the side seam a little bit less than 5 eighths uh, by a little bit. I mean like, I think I sewed it at 3 eighths, so I added like a half an inch. And I could have absolutely, like I could take that back out easily. But what this does make is it more comfortable. And I think also having that space makes my like fluff not fluff out so much. So that's great. So these fit basically perfectly. And I love it. And the straps are, and they're really comfortable also. Whereas the other one has like a busk that goes down to like here. So you feel this like wood thing pushing into your stomach. So I just need to cut this off probably about here and then round it and put a grommet here and a grommet here so you can tie them together. 
I could sew it. Like, there's no reason not to sew it, really. I think you are well within your rights to sew it if you want to, but tying it gives you a little bit more play. Like, you can move it around a little bit if you need to. If my boobs get bigger, which they, they are not going to. <laughs> so, I have relatively small boobs for, like, how big my fluff is, so... Anyway, someone funnily asked me the other day, they're like, aren't those cups really small? And I'm like, no, no, they're not. They're just fine. So um, they will get brought in a little bit. I am going to put ties in the center of each of the cups instead of having one in the center here, which is where it would normally go if this was closed in the front. So I'm going to have two little bows <laughs> that are right here on the inside to help like pull, pull this into a couple shape, a cup shape. But I mean, I think... I think everything about it is pretty good. So I am pleased. I could, I don't know, should I, am I supposed to put the strap here? It feels comfortable here. So I think I'm gonna leave it. My shoulders are really slopey also. This is the profile shot. So it does not push my pudge too much. I do not get the weird thing. The back fits. I don't know, can I see the back? Can you see the back? The back fits really well. So I am very pleased with this fitting. So far everything looks really good. I'm I'm staring into the monitor thing at myself to see what the fit is like. That's funny. Yeah, I'm very pleased with these. I go ahead and cut them and then put the grommets in for those and bind it and we're complete. Okay, grommets are in, so I checked, and you can sew it, no problem, and you can grommet, and, and they're both fine. So that's what I did. You can also eyelet it, which is probably significantly more period accurate. Grommets, though, were invented in, like, 18, like, really early in the 1800s, so the, this book, this book, this <laughs> instruction manual actually says that they're fine to use, but, yeah, probably eyelets would be better, um, more period appropriate, but... I don't care. The squish needs uh, a little bit of firm handling. So, anyway, these are all in. I did move this grommet on the other side of this uh, piece of boning because I looked at the other one I made and I did... Actually, that one's way over here, so I moved it over to there. It's a good compromise. Let's my boobies have free range to boob. But right now, I'm going to go to Santa Cruz and have some dinner with my husband at my favorite Greek restaurant. And it's going to be delicious. And by at my favorite Greek restaurant, I mean in his car. But it's going to be tasty. And we just eat there so that we don't have to drive the... It's like an hour back. So the food stays warm and we get to eat it fresh and stuff. So we're going to do that. Um, and then Hamilton premieres tonight. The stage performance with the original cast. And I have seen Hamilton, I think, five times at this point. Uh, but never with the original cast, so I am really pumped to see this. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna need to bind all of this tonight anyway, <laughs> so I'll just sit there and bind while I watch Hamilton, which will be awesome. I'm gonna use quarter inch binding for most of it and then switch to half inch bi binding just for the front section so that I can uh, run a ribbon through it and be able to tie it up. But I don't know if I'll finish it all tonight, but we'll see. I mean, it's a three hour performance or whatever, so. Okay, it's like four o'clock in the morning. I have watched Hamilton. I cried, as I always do. I also applied with backstitching the inside of, or the front side, I guess, of the, the binding. So now I have to wrap it around and give that a stitch down tomorrow. And then I have to deal with this section on both sides, which will get a wider binding, but it's four. I'm going to bed. Okay, it is Sunday. I have no idea where I left off, so I'm just going to tell you where I left off. I got literally all of this bound on Friday, all the way up there, and this front one. And here's what I meant about having the ties on each boob. So there they are. Uh, I do some jinky making it smaller business around these guys. And I did all of it except one boob. <laughs> and then I got super exhausted and went to bed because it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this other boob today and finish this project and then call this vlog. I did spend all of yesterday making a channel trailer, which involved me digging through literally every video I've ever made to look for footage that I wanted to use. Whew, it was a long process. I mentioned that I don't have air conditioning this week, right? Right? 
yeah, our air compressor blew, so we don't have air conditioning, and the guy's not coming till Wednesday. So, rad. It's also 95 degrees here. Cool. So I'm gonna sit here and do this today. And we are feature complete on these stays. Woo woo! I'm gonna go get into... Actually, I'm gonna try and cool myself off for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna go get into a shift so that I can do another little try on for you and get some photos and then we are done woo -woo. I also wanted to mention that my friend Kat also made a pair of Regency short stays and she I think hers are slightly shorter than mine though uh, she did them straight by hand and she just put up her video as well so I will go ahead and link that down below for you if I can link a card I will do it above if I can't I won't I don't really understand what they let you link and what they don't tried to do so many different things. I think they want it to be your video or playlist, but and that's it, but I'll try. Anyway, um, her video is super cute and you should go check her out because Kat's awesome. Okay, so here we are. Here's what it looks like. There's a little bit of a, a pooch that happens right here, right underneath the edge, but it is very loose. Like, I can stick my hands up in here and leaving Room to have sit and tea and all sorts of yum. It looks pretty good in the back. Very happy with it. It comes to exactly my waist, which is very nice. It's very comfortable to sit in. Mm, I think it's pretty. So, yay. Very happy with it. And with that, I will finish up this vlog here. If you like this vlog, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And if you're new here, go leave me comments and let me know who you are and where you come from and what you're into and what you're working on. And if you're not new here, then come say hi and tell me what you've been up to. And I will see you guys next time with another vlog. Bye guys!